and that's why it's important to consult with a mortgage loan officer that can go through your financial snapshot and kind of give you an idea of what you can afford. Right? Some people, some of us, we just don't know how much are we spending each month. Right on our rent, on our bills, are you going to Starbucks and getting coffee? And, and sometimes what, what people start finding out is when you go through your financial snapshot with a loan officer, you start seeing things that you can cut back on. And again, it makes owning a home that much more possible. So again, I'm going to continue to repeat myself. It's, it's important to consult with a mortgage loan officer or anybody, a financial representative that can walk, talk you through. Can you afford it? And the interest rates, to her, to her comment there, interest rates are going to go up, interest rates are going to go down. If you can afford today, maybe there's an opportunity to refund, refinance in 6 to 12 months. I don't have a glass ball. I sure hope there is an opportunity to refinance in 6, 12, 18 months. But just keep that in mind. Can we talk a little bit about gift funds? What What is, is our gift funds, can we talk a little bit about that? Give us the definition of what gift funds are and can we use them when buying a home? So gift funds would be funds that are received, um, you know, from a family member, whether that's um, one large gift fund or whether that's, you know, from multiple family members pulling in. Um, essentially, it's just gift, gift funds are funds that are gifted to you from outside sources, right? And in the city's perspective, we do not have a cap on gift funds that are going towards the transaction, but we do have a cap on the down payments down payment amount. So we don't um, we don't allow for down payments to exceed 20% of the down down payment just because you know if, if we are dealing with the down payment assistance program so we're looking at need right so if you already have 20% down then there's very little need right so that's where gift funds do come into play is where it can't exceed 20% of the down payment towards the house right because we are providing that down payment assistance. Yes, as far as gift funds, you want to make sure that um, all the loan officer and the entity in whom you are applying the down payment programs are on the same page. So some will require the gift funds, have them be seasoned in an account for at least 90 days. But you want to make sure you understand that some down payment programs may not um, accept gift funds. So, but you want to make sure that you're disclosing if there's, we've seen folks that have an inheritance, that's coming up or they're going to pull a large amount of stuff from investing, you want to make sure you, you disclose any and all financial information to your loan officer and to make sure that uh, you can move forward with the gift funds. At the gift fund, uh, at the castle, when you mentioned to me the gift fund, I will say no because I have I want to see how much you have saved. I want you to save your, your pattern of saving the money because you're the one who make the mortgage payment. I don't want you to rely on a gift fund unless you really need it. Saving, as you know that from the beginning, I always talk about saving. Because saving showed me that how you know to save money and show me that you can make the mortgage payment. Thank you. The next few questions are along the lines of qualifying for a mortgage, and what you need for down payment assistance. So some of the things that lenders are looking for when you're applying for a loan. The first thing is, what is a credit score? So before we go into, does everybody or anybody in the room know exactly what their credit score is today? Can you raise your hand if you, you know exactly where it is today? Excellent. I think there's a lot of technology available, right? Whether it's your, your banking institution or online websites that'll give you an idea of where your credit score stands today. So if they don't know, I would leverage one of those online sites to see just where you are, roughly where you're at with your credit score. So let's talk, what is a credit score, Carol? So, well, I'm sure most of you pretty much have some knowledge in regards to, like I was saying, uh, where you kind of out to see where your credit score is at. Um, typically, um, the minimum credit score or that we look for is about 620, and that's, um, that's a mid-score, so that's after your high or your low. Um, it's a mid score um, of a 620, and that's usually the minimum that is required when we're uh, purchasing a home. Um, so that, that's kind of like a, it's, it's a way that uh, we can kind of verify the repayment, make sure that you know um, we have um, some credit behind you. Now, also with um, the credit score, uh, we also have uh, if, it, if it goes back into like. Um, 
like credit history, sometimes people don't have a normal type of a, a credit history with credit cards. Uh, with first time homebuyers, we do have um, different uh, variances where we're able to actually tolerate different ways where we can um, see where your credit comes in as well. So even though you're a first time homebuyer, you're worried about your credit, there are different ways you can actually access credit scores as well. So just um, just so we can that too. And for the Safety Brown Groves Down Payment Assistance Program, um, we require what's called a fair credit score. Now that means um, all the way from, I believe it's 580 to 670 is really that fair credit range score. So we are, are actually a little bit lower requirement than an actual traditional mortgage. So we tend to punt that to the traditional mortgage lender because if you qualify for a mortgage, then you're gonna qualify in regard to the credit score with our program. So. Yes, yeah, so and what that said is I, uh, we don't realize how important credit is until we need to utilize it, right? And so um, we always say that the higher your credit score is as you are transitioning toward homeownership, the better for a number of reasons. One, you're gonna get better, better rates, better products offered to you. But um, I just want to share a statistic, and I'm, you know, writing notes as I'm up here. Is um, there was a, st a, st a statistic that was commissioned several years ago from NeighborWorks America, which were, um, were an affiliate. NeighborWorks Orange County is an affiliate, and it states that one third of families that attend home buyers education and pre-purchase counseling are less likely to default on their home. And I love sharing that statistic because. Um, a HUD approved counseling agency is underutilized. We offer the free pre purchase counseling, we offer the required home buyers education. I have been um, in, in a number of home buyers education classes and I always walk away learning something new, and I'm a homeowner. Uh, but going back to the question, credit is extremely important. Um, some down payment programs may require a threshold, some as low as some 80, some as high as 60. Our goal as a head of counseling agency is to have you have a higher credit score so that way you are ready. Um, and then of course, um, you know, making sure that as you are transitioning to home ownership is you want to make sure that you don't co um, be a um, a co-borrower, um, if you will, on uh, getting the line of credit and someone asks you to be a co-signer, please don't do that, especially if you're transitioning toward home ownership because then you're then adding on that line of credit. Your focus is to um, diminish your, your debt, increase your credit score so that way you're, you're really um, good and when you are uh, ready to have those conversations with the loan officer as far as credit is concerned. I agree with City of Bangor. If you already get approved by the first mortgage, you can approve with the City of Bangor. And as a counselor, I'm looking the credit score between 680 and above. But the more the better, 700 and above or way better. Some of the down payment programs, they require 700 or more. And like, if you have credit card, if you plan to buy a house in the future, please stop using it, but don't close it. If you close it, it will affect your FICO score, but don't close it, don't apply for a new credit card. It, even though they are for like free interest, no interest for common, don't, don't, don't apply for it. I have one client already almost closed, and she went to buy, uh, Best Buy to buy all the kitchen, uh, stove, new, everything, everything stopped. She so have to pay off that um, credit card that before they can close the store. It will affect you. Because the more debt you have, the less purchase price you will get. Thank you for that. So I think we, we pretty much answered the next question, which was, do you need a perfect credit score? So we know you don't need a perfect credit score based on what they just told us right here. There are a lot of variables that come into play when you're trying to improve your credit score. Just as a disclosure, I can't, I'm not a credit advisor. Right? I can't tell you, hey, go do this and you're gonna, your credit score is going to go up. Because if it doesn't go up, then it's my fault. But what I will tell you is there's a lot of general information out there that you can leverage to see, hey, how can I improve my credit score? They all just touched on it right now, right? When you're, when you're looking at your credit score, how much debt do you have, right? Is your credit cards maxed out? Do you have free auto loans? Do you have late payments? And so these are things that a financial consultant or even a mortgage loan officer can speak to. 
I will say that one of the things that you just alluded to it right now is that when you go to buy a home, sometimes what we see is clients, they get they get a little excited, they go, oh my gosh, I can afford this. And they go, well, you know what, man, a new car would look really good in the driveway of my new home. <laughs> and they, it would, it will, but the, the primary focus when you're a first time home buyer, of course, is the offer, right? And I'm guilty of it myself, I love cars. So, you know, you give me an opportunity to put one in the driveway, I'm gonna do it. But again, the home first, and all the add-ons later. So I won't speak, I won't go into that. You know, take in mind again, uh, how to prove counseling agency. So OC Home Ownership, Shalom Center, NeighborWorks, Orange County. When you are taking advantage of a how to prove counseling agency and you sit down for an assessment, you're getting your credit report pulled. It's a soft pull. It doesn't impact your credit score. You walk away knowing your AMI, which is your um, area of need income, which is so important as far as down payments are concerned. And guess what? You walk away with that copy of your credit score, and that does lead to attaining financial benchmarks, and then you get to uh, homeownership much faster. But this is why I say that HUD food counseling agencies are um, underutilized, and we want to make sure that families do take advantage of the services provided. You got in your Can you give us the definition of first time home buyer? What does first time home buyer actually mean? First time home buyer means that you have not owned a home the last three years. If you own a home and you already sell, you no longer own that home, you have to wait for three years. For example, if you sold a home in January 1st, 2024, you have to wait until January 1st. And some of the now payment program they require five years. Yeah. And some of the program I read they require seven years. So it depends on. Yeah. So we do follow HUD guidelines, as Helen mentioned. Uh, the first time home buyer is defined as someone who has not owned a home in the last three years or has a vested interest in a home. So if you're writing off the interest and the taxes, that also does disqualify you. But you know, we would fail to, to um, uh, we wanna share with you that folks that lost their home to a foreclosure or to a short sale, and which is defined as a boomerang population, um, that is also defined as a first time home buyer, even after seven years. And the beauty of that is that they too can access down payment programs given that they have surpassed that um, that threshold as far as the pay period, the uh, four year or seven years. So share that because some people think that I, you know, if they own a home and they no longer do, they are reclassified as first time home buyers. Yeah, and the city's program is a three year term. So as, as long as you haven't owned a home in the past three years, you would qualify for a down payment assistance. So I want to just, just emphasize, that's a, that's a very big selling point there. Three years, right? So you, you may, obviously you're all here today, right? You took the time out of your day to learn about the first time home buyer seminar, and that's why we're speaking to you all. Some of your family members may feel, hey, I'm not a first time home buyer, I can't, I'm not gonna go to that because that's gonna benefit me. And now you learn today that if, if you haven't owned a home in the last three years, you may be eligible for the down payment assistance. So I would encourage you to, to share with your family and your friends, it's three years. Sorry. We'll, we'll take one question. If there's any other questions, we'll save them for the end. Just because I saw your hand and eye contact. Go ahead. Thanks. Um, if your co-signer has bought a home within the last three years and still owns a home, does that disqualify you for the home system? Great question. Panel? So that would disqualify you. If they are on title of the home, it's whoever's on title would have to be first time home buyers, not have owned, in, uh, owned a home in the past three years. Great question, thank you for asking. What is, what is a, in, in simple terms, what is a mortgage and what is the difference between a mortgage and a down payment assistance program? So mortgage is basically the first loan that you would take out. Um, like let's say you, know, you come and then you um, you talk to a loan officer, we get you um, qualified, um, and then you would be qualified to take out a mortgage. That would be the first loan when you purchase a home, 
that would be the, it, they, it would be a position of the first mortgage. And then um, we hand it over to us in regards to the second mortgage that would be placed to the down payment system. Yeah, so in, she alluded to the, the primary mortgage being the first on, on title, first lien on, on the home. The city's loan works as a sec, uh, secondary financing, so it would be a second lien, meaning it's, it's, it's really a silent second. So um, down payment assistance programs have a variety of terms, so I'm just speaking to the Garden Grove program. Um, but it's a 30-year deferred loan, which means there's no monthly payments until after that 30-year term is up. That's when you either pay it off all in one lump sum, or you can convert that into a monthly schedule. That makes makes sense for the family, right? So it gives you a lot of flexibility to get into the home, get settled, worry about that primary mortgage, and then after 30 years, you then have to pay our city loan back, whether that's in a monthly payment or in one lump sum. Technically, it can be you when once you refinance your home as well, you can also you can also pay that off. Is traditionally when that's paid off as well. Go ahead. So she asked if, if you start paying after 30 years or if it's due at the 30 year mark. So ultimately there's no monthly payments required for 30 years. So you, you take advantage of our program, no monthly payments will be required of you for 30 years and then after 30 years is up, that's when we'll have our loan servicing agent who's called the Marinette. They contact you and ask for either a lump sum or you can convert that into a, an amortized or a monthly payment schedule. Whatever works works best for you. Um, I think we will hold questions until the very end, just so we can get through our, our set of questions. But yeah. It's related to what he was asking. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. So what if you want to pay off, not pay off, but start paying the uh, down payment before thirty years? Okay, so she asked if you can make payments prior to that thirty years being over. There's no penalties, so you can start paying that off whenever you're able to, right? But well, we give you that 30 years of just a little bit of flexibility yeah. so that you can start making, if it's, if you get a raise and you have a hundred extra dollars a month, you can start making hundred dollar payments so that at the end of the end of the 30 years, it's not as, as much, right? We, of course, incentivize anyone to get into that payment as soon as possible, but we give you that flexibility. And this is one of those things where a lot of the a lot of the information and some of the details that are being shared right now, the majority of you in this room are probably a lot smarter than I am. So maybe you do understand deferred payment and so on and so forth. I'll tell you right now, before I got into mortgage, I would be sitting in the audience wondering what in the world is he talking about. Right? We all know what he means, but I, I say that again to encourage you to talk to a mortgage loan officer, talk to the, the financial experts, and get a very good understanding of what does that down payment assistance mean? Right? When is it due? Can I make payments throughout the term of the loan? Those are some of the questions that if you sat, for instance, if we all sat down and had a conversation one-on-one, -on -one, you would leave knowing, okay, this is exactly what that meant. You'd go home and talk to your family and friends. So I say that all because all of the advice being shared with you is spot on, but it's if you don't have a full understanding about it, you'll be here today and you're ah, I think I kind of knew, but and then you go on about your meeting. So. With that being said, can we talk a little bit about how will, how will the nonprofit determine the amount of down payment assistance that will qualify? I'll go ahead and take that since I have the mic. Um, so the way we determine the down payment assistance amount is really depending on what the home, home buyers have towards their, their primary mortgage. So what's the maximum amount that they were, they were awarded through a bank, um, and how much money do they have towards the down payment. So we add those up to see really what the borrower has um, in terms of what they were approved for for that mortgage and what's their down payment. And then what's the cost of the home, right? So if there's a $100,000 gap, the city would, would provide that. So we say up to 110,000, but that doesn't necessarily mean everyone's gonna go out with a $110,000 loan. It's really based off of need, based on what you're approved for through that primary, and then what the overall cost of the home is gonna be. Thank you for that. Any additional? So I guess to add to that, um, like Tim was saying, the minimum we're looking for would be a 3% down payment. That you would qualify with a mortgage, a loan officer can kind of evaluate your entire uh, uh, profile, and then if, with that 3% minimum, it'd be the starting point. And then, and then of course, whatever's needed after that. 
I don't know about anybody else in the room, but if I went and sat, spoke with Garden Grove or Santa Ana, and they said, hey, Frank, we could we can give you about $40,000 to help you buy a home, uh, it makes me pretty excited. So again, all of you took the time out of your day. I would strongly encourage having a conversation, with, whether it's $100,000 down payment assistance, whether it's $20,000 down payment assistance, it's assistance. And I think that in today's market, we all see on the news affordability, you see the home prices where they're scrolling through Zillow or Redfin, you're seeing how expensive things are, and any kind of assistance can go a long way. So for me personally, and I don't work for Garden Grove or Santa Ana, but I, would, I myself would strongly encourage all of you to have that conversation. Otherwise, you spend you know, the last two hours in this um, in this facility hearing a lot of good things, but it's not acting on that information. So ask the questions. Um, that's, that's where I'll leave that. What if, what if they own, what if a, a borrower is self-employed? Can we use, if they own their own business, can we use that income to qualify for the for a mortgage? 